box happy new comic book day to you today we got a special show we're going to talk about we got the sony deal that we're going to finally just put a period to we got some news about the hulk wolverine movie that we broke uh the other day we got a special guest my man word burglar and we're going to start right after this What's good, YouTube and I? It's hey, welcome to Lords of the Long Box, episode 141. Happy new comic book day to you. As you notice, my man, Dark Side Jedi and Nemesis Prime are both on the disabled list. They're a little sick, man. It's, it's flu shot season, man. You got to go out and get the flu shot. So hopefully they'll be kicking in the live chat. I got my man, Otto from the Grotto. Say what's up. Yo, what's up to all my Autobots out there? Yo, I was gone last week, but you know where I was found? I was found in a by Hound with Mirage in a garage making little <laughs> Autobots, right? And I know my boy Word Burglar just said that, so I'm ready to spit that tonight, man. So I'm ready to go, man. It's going to be good stuff tonight. And nice. been a big fan of this man for, for a minute now. I have finally got him on the show. He's going to talk about comics and hip-hop and his new album. Say what's up to my man Word Burglar. What's up? Thanks for having me. It's great to be here with the Lords, man. This is dope. That's right. Here come yeah, the yeah. Lords. But, uh, <laughs> you know, and here's the funny thing is you aren't even the first Canadian comic star to be on here. <laughs> My man, Ken Lashley, if you know, he's from uh, Toronto. Ken Lashley, yep. the artist. Yeah, he's been on the show like twice. Uh, big fan of the show. You got, I met him a few, like four or five years ago. We hit it off. And so he's coming on here every, every now and then. So sorry, you're the second Canadian. Uh, oh, no. Man, I'm honored. Ken Lashley's a legend. The first back from Halifax. I will say yeah. that the first back from Halifax. But you're in Toronto now, right? Yeah, yeah, based in Toronto right now, but definitely from uh, Halifax and the East Coast. So there you go. yeah, All right. yeah. There you go. We get both the guys on the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast. So yeah. uh, before we get started, man, this show is sponsored by KRSComics.com. Go to KRSComics.com. Use the discount code of L O T L B to get ten percent off any KRS Comics exclusive variants. Also, the show is brought to you by the geekyswagshop.com. Go to the geekyswagshop.com, use the discount code of LOTLB to get 15% anything in the Geeky Swag Shop, including these wonderful Lords of the Long Box t shirts, man. Right? We got to get, we got to give my man Burgundy one. You know what I'm saying? Those so, are he nice, can write yeah. that, man. So, uh, we're going to get to some of your uh, more current news later on in the show. And I was, I was teasing people. We have a lot of friends that are actually in the New York City area. So, we'll, we'll talk about that because I saw you just drop that like two hours ago. Uh, but, I want to talk to you about your career. And uh, first of all, uh, being this is a comic book show, comic book related, uh, I won't tell people how old you are, but I mean, a lot of stuff you rap about is stuff that we all enjoyed, like uh, cartoons on Saturday mornings, comic books, Transformers, anime, all that stuff. How did you grow up in, as a kid in Canada? How did you get involved in comic books? What was your first comic books that you read and how did you find out about them? So on and so forth. Uh, yeah, when I was a kid, uh, honestly, the first comics I got were just from the corner store, you know, on the spinner rack, like gas stations at the grocery store. Uh, you know, my mom would get me a comic to maybe keep me quiet or something. There you go, right? <laughs> I read a lot of Spider-Mans and then uh, got into, of course, like Marvel DC. G.I. Joe was a big one for me. Like I got into that like probably around like the 30s of G.I. Joe. And then like over the years, I would build, you know, go back. And that's the great thing about comics. You know, you dive into Spidey. You've got a long history to go back into. And when I was in high school, I got a job working at this really, really great comic shop called Strange Adventures. So shout out Strange Adventures and everybody out there. And still open? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. They've nice. got they got three locations uh, on the East Coast. And they've won like Spirit of Comics Award, like Eisner nice. Award. And they're just, just a great hub for the comics community. And they were really the first comic shop I went to that uh, really was all about the community and supporting the art of comics, and and really they've done an incredible job of just building up. Are they the scene. In, are they in Halifax or are they in Toronto? Yeah, they're in Halifax, so they have a location in Halifax, Dartmouth, and Fredericton, New Brunswick. And then I worked there for a bit in high school, and then I actually 
went to Toronto and worked for Silver Snail Comics. So I spent a lot of time, you know, I always joke, like I put myself through rap school working at a comic store. Nice. Uh, so what are you, you surprised by my content for? And there you uh, go. so, you know, I'd be like digging through all the back issue bins and getting caught up on everything. And uh, I had older cousins and kids on my street who like had tons of comics. So I got like the full education early on from like Frank Miller, Daredevil to, you know, yeah, all the, all the Marvel DC stuff, crisis, everything. So, so let uh, yeah. me hear. So next time you can you can say this in a song. This is a kind of a phrase that I've coined on this show. We say keep digging in those long boxes. So yep. man, anytime you want to show, shout out, shout out the Lord. Say keep digging in them long boxes. That's always say Lord's a long box. So nice. Uh, actually, this dude actually he tweeted to me that he's a fan of yours, Brothers Grimm. What's up in the live chat? Uh, Brothers Grimm, I was 16. The place was the studio, an underground venue about a bottle depot. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, where Burglar killed it. I'm 30 now and still doing music. Shout out Brothers Grimm. Dope. Yeah. Shout out Brothers Grimm for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edmonton. I love Yeg. Shout out everybody in Edmonton for sure. Alberta. So, Spread all right. So nerds from DC. Persia to Alberta. There you go for <laughs> it. So uh, here's the main question we uh, everybody wants to know, DC or Marvel? So hard, so hard. These days, I think I'm reading a few more DCs than Marvel. Uh, mm -hmm. Growing up, I was probably a bit more of a Marvel zombie. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd say it's probably about 60, 40 Marvel to DC. That's where that's I got controversial, go. man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so so I was going as Transformers to GI Joe. Which one? Oh, oh, oh man, they're oh, they're the cousins. Uh, I probably say GI Joe. Uh, from 2007 earlier, okay, and then yeah. from like 2008 on, probably Transformers. Because right. I'll say those IDW Transformer comics have been amazing and nice. keeping things really going. I think, and fortunately, Joe's had a few missteps. I think in uh, in terms of the movies and uh, really yeah. kind of they've really yeah. let that that uh, property die. Unfortunately, however, unfortunately. you know, as I say that today, New Comic Book Day. I just picked up the best G.I. Joe comic I've read in a while. Issue one just came out today. Paul Allor, shout out. And IDW is doing great stuff. Larry Hama yeah. is, is writing. He's doing a killer job. So uh, Maybe I'll check like, that out on the Word Burglar's recommendation. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, this is dope. Issue one just came out today. It's a whole new era for Joe. And uh, it's the best G.I. Joe number one from IDW I've read in a while. Because they've done like six or seven in the last few years. But uh yeah. So since we are called Lords of the Long Box, how many long boxes do you have? Oh man, <laughs> uh, that's the right answer right there. If you like, you can. Yeah. You can't like. Uh, I can't even count them all. I can't even count. Like I have. It's funny. I can like tell what era I bought comics in too, because like some stuff's really light, and that's like the newsprint comics, which <laughs> like my collection yeah. of older the newsprint smell stuff. of comics that you don't have yeah. anymore because the pages don't smell anymore. So yeah. Um, so w at what age did you start getting like into music? Were you always musically inclined or were you just like, hey, I, th I found this thing, new, new thing called hip hop? Because there's been a burgeoning Canadian hip hop scene way before Drake, right? I mean, it was mostly oh, yeah. underground. Speak on that. Oh, yeah. Well, Maestro Fresh West is probably, well, he is the first major, major rap star to come out of Canada. But hip hop was alive and well, like in the 80s, you know, especially on the East Coast, being close to New York, you know, a lot yeah. of stuff was trickling over into Toronto, you know, coming up like from into Toronto and, and the East Coast of Canada. So there's been a really great, um, a really great scene in Canada for a long time. And yeah, you know, Drake's doing his thing, of course, you know, he's, he's done pretty well for himself. But uh, there's definitely yeah, do like, you know Drake? Uh, do you know Jake personally? No, I met him one time, and this is a true story. Uh, I auditioned for a Pizza Pops commercial, which is like <laughs> these microwave pizza things, yeah. and they were bringing in rappers. And this was when he was still on a TV show called The Grassy. That's now, right. That's yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was great on that show. You know, shout out. And uh, so I don't know for sure if he was there for the audition for the Pizza Pops, but they were calling in people who rapped, and I met him in the uh, audition waiting room. And uh, he was he was really cool. And I went in and uh, funny story is I got the part. <laughs> I got in the commercial rapping about pizza pops. And uh, yeah, I, Drake didn't. So, I mean, but, you know, he's he's done pretty well for himself. So. Since we're on the same <laughs> subject, the Canadian rappers, Brothers Grimm has a question. Three uh, questions for Burger. Uh, one, his top three Canadian MCs. Two, has he ever rocked with drunken arseholes from Newfoundland? And three, is John Cena feature possible considering the esoteric and trademark connect 
Oh wow, that is that's a super tough question. That's very specific to Canadian hip hop, I think. <laughs> okay, well, number one, you got to give it to Maestro Fresh West, hundred yeah. percent. I think Maestro is the, the god of hip hop in Canada. Uh, then I'm probably gonna go with uh, Socrates because who's a Toronto MC. I was a huge fan of. Uh, Hate Runs Deep was like a 12 inch record I, I grabbed when I was a lot younger, and I just I always thought he's a crazy MC. Um, and then I'll probably give it up to Buck 65, who was a real innovator in Canadian hip hop and did a lot of awesome, awesome things. He did some stuff with Anticon, which was an American underground rap label for a while. So uh, that would probably be my like top three of all time in terms of uh, discography. But man, there's like hundreds of incredible MCs. Uh, what was the next question? Drunken Arseholes? Yes, I know them. They are dope. And John Cena. I don't know, man. If John Cena ever wanted to do something, that'd be fresh. Uh, I did do a track with Esoteric, who is an incredible MC out of Boston. And uh, and I know Esso's worked with with John Cena, so that's really fresh. But yeah. uh, I don't Part know. Part of me being a big fan of hip-hop, meaning the four elements of hip-hop, DJing, MCing, graffiti, uh, uh, b-boying. I'm also a big fan of Scratch Bastard, who's from oh, yeah. Canada, one of the dopest turntablists in the world. And and then uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about it later is how cool it is we have this weird degree of separation, like six degrees. Like you worked with Cool Keith, whose nickname is Dr. Octagon, who worked with Dan the Automator, who worked with DJ Qbert, and I worked with DJ Qbert's brother in the Bay Area. So there's your six degrees That's of separation. That's crazy. That's crazy. And, uh, uh, but I would just know because I, I follow Scratch Bastard all the time, and it's so dope when he does his uh, Bastard's barbecues, uh, and he has like Jazzy Jeff there, DJ Newmark. Uh, that he, right now he had this dude named DJ Coco from Japan who kills it. Uh, turntableism on 45s, dude. You got to imagine on 45s. That's crazy. Have you ever messed with the, uh, the tables at all? Uh, yeah. When I was a kid, I destroyed a whole bunch of my parents' records. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Let's see uh, if these play backwards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I had 1200s for a little while and, uh, like I just borrowed them from a friend and, uh, and just messed around with it. And, uh, I love it, but no, I can't even come close to someone like bastard. Like he's, he's absolutely insane. And, uh, yeah. man, so Canada's talented. gotten a lot of dope DJs, a lot of dope yep. DJs. Um, I That's remember awesome like I was watching you know, like yeah. a, I was watching like a Raptors halftime show and they had like Jeff on there, Bastard on there. Uh, it's like four color connect and some other dude. He, cause Bastard brings them all to Canada for his, his barbecues. He really puts Canada on the map. And so does Bergie, man. He, he puts it down. So uh, going on to your hip hop career, now that you've get the comics, when did you start melding the geek culture to the hip hop culture? I don't want to call you geek core hip hop because that reminds me of very kind of nerdy rap. I would say you're more, I don't even label you, but you know, you're more independent alternative as opposed to when I, it's not even called geek core. It's called nerd core. And that's very, very nerdy. Like it's very like specific. It's not even to a point where it's not really hip hop to them. It's more of them talking about really nerdy things like Dungeons and Dragons and, like, and things of that nature. I mean, I don't want you to label it, but when did you start mixing your two worlds together of geek culture and hip hop? Uh, I mean, I've always just, incorporated what i know like to me hip-hop was always about rapping what you know and yeah. you know i definitely listened you you and i before the show were talking about like old school hip-hop you go back to sugar hill gang they were rapping about superman you know exactly, take it out yeah. curtis blow had a transformer song you know of course wu-tang you know so much nerdy ultra magnetic mcs like there's always great references especially coming out of new york with all the comic books and you know comics and rap see he was a yeah. huge comic book yeah. fan yeah he has a Absolutely. comic book now We'll talk about actually yeah. you had a comic book for a while, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Go yeah, ahead, yeah. No, no. And so I just have always rapped about the stuff I love. And, uh, you know, I used to kick freestyles when I was working at the comic shop. And so if I was playing a video game, you know, we play Street Fighter 2 at the arcade all day and I'd be like rhyming and stuff. And to me, it was just like, that's who I am. So I wanted to make sure, you know, I was being honest and a big part of to me what hip hop is. And I mean, it's it's you. It's it, it, honesty is first and foremost and you got to be true to yourself so yeah if i want to kick a rhyme about transformers or star wars or whatever the case may be that's just who i am now nerdcore it's it's great and i mean i totally like there are some incredible artists in the nerdcore scene and that has been like a thing that you know it's been in a lot of ways it's been really cool for me to see because i was just kind of doing this stuff and it was like yeah i just thought like i'm a rapper first but i'm 
super nerd also. <laughs> yeah. See, so, I think I, yeah. I think the term should be geek because nerds are very kind of, you know what I'm saying? Geek, I think, has a more open uh, appeal to it that kind of does everything. I think nerds are very specific to one thing. Like a nerd is very nerdy about computers or they're very nerdy about this where geek is like geek culture like comic books video games like you know anime or whatever and you put them all together and that's i think that's why you know that's why i like to say the geek core as opposed to nerd core and you know there there's memes out there the difference between a nerd and a geek if you ever if you ever google it and it's very kind of specific to that but um now that when did you i guess how did you break into the scene because i meant Later on, I'm going to talk to you about the structure of a song and how you write your your lyrics, right? 16, break 16, and then another 16 or uh, that. But I want to talk about how you, when did you like go into the studio? Did you, somebody give you a break? Did you appear on somebody else's? Was this what uh, the dregs of, was they called the dregs yeah, of society? Man. Right. Yeah, the, the dregs of society. So that was just our crew. And we were honestly like, I started writing rhymes in like grade five. And my first rap name was SJ Jazzy Jordan. <laughs> oh, see, that's not old school, man. That's not old school, man. Yeah. yeah. Was, like, all the kids, like I, we used to listen to these things called rap tracks. I don't know if they had them in America, but they were these mixtapes. And it was basically like the hottest rap songs of the year were all on one yeah. of these tapes. And they were like k -Tel or poly -Tel or I don't know if you had stuff Yeah, like I remember that. k -Tel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. we had all these rap tracks tapes and they get passed around the schoolyard. And like I was listening to old school stuff. And yeah, Run DMC, Public Enemy, like all of like – I remember Father MC, like all these, you know, intelligent you hoodlum. Like, you, yeah. I would do for you. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, Cool G Rap, Eric B. Rakim, like everything. So I was just loved rhyming and just always tried to do it. And uh, I don't know, the Drakes were our, like me and my friends. We all just loved rap and we would make these bad little rap mixtapes. Who and was Stuart? Yeah, <laughs> you've done your work. Right, uh, yeah. man. I'm trying to be like that one guy that does those interviews. Uh, <laughs> what's his name? You know what I'm talking about, right? Nardwar? Uh, Yes, Nardwar. I love his <laughs> interviews, dude, where he just pulls like crazy stuff out and the, the people in the interviews are looking at him like, dude, are you a stalker? I I I I, I, I want to be him, but no, I'm not stalking you. I just I I try to do as much research as I can, but go ahead. My man, so you had a All song good. called Stewart, which seems like you guys are just like, hey man, let's make a song about one of our friends and just mess with him. Yeah, well, that was because we just all get together and write raps on like a Friday night, you know, we're, you know, just young in high school. And our buddy Stu got, uh, he, he got caught drinking and he got grounded, so he couldn't come out. And so we kept calling him to come out and he didn't come out. So then we just wrote this song all about him and it was like how we felt bad for him. And now he's grounded and he has to stay home and he's just like watching Star Trek movies and... <laughs> Sure, that's like awesome. Nintendo or NBA Jam or something, and uh, yeah, so we just made that song about him, and it kind of it the tape got circulated around like our high school and other schools, and yeah, then just I just never stopped rapping, and um, I just kind of started writing solo tracks because I was used to just writing like track like posse cuts with all my friends and stuff, and yeah, I've just been releasing stuff since yeah the mid two thousands, I guess. So it's, wow. it's it's been a so while. But when did would you yeah. say is when you got your first break uh, and you got to go in studio with a real recruiting uh, you know, recording session with a sound engineer and you know thirty two tracks as opposed to just you know four tracks or eight tracks or somebody just playing a record and you rhyming on top of a beat. Uh, well, the cool thing is a lot of the guys that I'm working with now are the same dudes that I was coming up with when I first started. So guys like Beat Mason and Fresh Kills and Timbuktu, like they were all just sort of learning. Everyone kind of had like weird little gear setups in their apartments or like just these little, you know, closet studios. And to this day, like I'll still be recording in a closet, you know, with like excellent gear and everything like that. So um, that's the thing yeah, about yeah. Uh, I'm I'm gonna assume like your friends are the same as you and they're geeks as well and geeks make the best IT people to make sound engineers. I mean Otto and I were listening to it and I was I was like the production values on this uh, even on your old stuff the production values are excellent. Like I can't tell you how much I listen to like trap music or mumble rap and it's just awful. The sound is off. I'm very sensitive in my ears because I used to DJ a lot and, and so the sound in my ears is just like it's getting raped by mumble rappers. And weird trap music where the levels are, and I don't like songs where people are yelling at me and giving me directions. You know what I mean? Like jump, stand, do this, do that. It's like, no, I'm too old to be in a club doing all that. But let's talk about one of my your favorite song or one of your biggest songs, at least I think, was um, was uh, 
the comic words with words with uh, drawings with words drawings with words I always mix I'm dyslexic sometimes so tell oh, us yeah. let's, let's see if we could play a bit on well I played it last week so tell us your inspiration for that and where you filmed the video yet and because that man when I played that for people they didn't they didn't believe you that you were their true geek I said yo man burger <laughs> is for real when you drop the nth man and triathlon <laughs> man you know what you're talking about <laughs> so break it, talk, talk about that song and what the reception was when that song came out yeah, man. Well, I yeah, no, I I love triathlon. The nth man was, you know, the Larry Hama. There you go. That's a great comic. Slept on, never collected either. The Sixteen issues. You can't get the trade. So go dig dig for that in the long boxes. There you um, go. Boom yeah, points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was just honestly like it. It's my a love of comics and like throwing in stuff. And I wanted to a big thing for me because I do. We do take music so seriously right and i appreciate you saying that the the quality sounds good to you because you know like i say first and foremost we're trying to make amazing rap albums and i'm trying to just you know do the best job i can and i also by that as like a, a rhyme writer you know i make better rhymes than i do beats so i always want to rhyme about stuff i've never heard people rhyme about before so this is and you know or you know like be like my opinion and my experiences so dropping triathlon in a rhyme i'd never heard anybody rap about triathlon i'd never heard anybody rap about we wood teased gun. The, I, i've teased this on social media that we're going to do the five fingers of death with you and otto and i are going <laughs> to throw uh certain character names and, and titles and you're going right. to freestyle off it right that hey that's the ultimate sure. that's the that's the new lords of long box five fingers of death challenge if anybody wants to step up after word burger you're going to have a lot oh. to step with Whoa, uh, well, we, we haven't done it yet, so uh, we'll I see. know people may tune out, but <laughs> hey, right, I just put the link to his uh, the video right there. Uh, yes, everybody, I you guys are asking about the Spider Man deal and everything. We're gonna get to that after we talk to my man, Bergy Man. I've been really hyped to talk about him about comic books, so just stay tight, everybody. If you want, leave a super chat if you want me to answer your question. I'm hyped. <laughs> I'm hyped. I got that new Spider Man today, actually. Oh, the new JJ Abrams one, yeah, yeah, there it is, yeah, yeah, they're uh, talking some crazy stuff about that, about uh, who it is and uh. It's really good. Yeah, we I can spoil it. Because I don't want spoil no spoilers. I don't, yeah. I don't no, know. You got a question though for, for burglar here. Oh, yeah. Listen, Berg. So when listen, when I was listening to the to the stuff, your your songs had a beginning and an end. Like you told the story, right? And to me, that's what hip hop was. You know, Slick Rick was a great storyteller. KRS one, Boogie Down Productions, they would all tell stories. Now music isn't like that. They're just saying stuff to say stuff and you know, spitting lyrics and stuff like that. But when you're getting into it. Like, is that your goal when you start or do you just throw it out there and see if you can put it together? Uh, it, it's all over. I mean, for the storytelling tracks. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I write a lot and, and I believe in that. Like, yeah, you want to tell a story and, and I'm constantly trying to get better at doing that. And I'm glad that, that you, you feel that and you pick up on that. I, uh, every track I kind of approach in a different way. I mean, okay. sometimes it is just going to be a whole bunch of different rhymes that I just want to kick over a beat because it sounds dope but you yeah, know right right i like to have a good balance and keep the themes and keep the concepts and definitely yeah. the storytelling is a huge part and like you know yeah slick rig i mean all day like you know just any storytelling is such an amazing part about hip-hop and right why, i think that's what we've know, lost yeah. at this time you know and again well, I'm also, lost, i know. think wordplay has lost a lot that like, m is probably the only one that stayed with wordplay yes. throughout the only mc who can make rhyme with orange right i heard him say it in an interview but it's what I like about wordplay is there's layers of metaphors that sometimes you have to rewind back and say, oh, wait a second. Did you guys catch that? Did you guys? And then a lot of times people do reaction videos uh, like there's new kids that listen to like 90s rap and they totally miss what like the MC was saying. Right. Like they can never like do a reaction to Tretch, like, you know, uh, Joker, the Toker song, whatever that one by Tretch, where he's like just oh, Tretch is crazy. Yeah, he does like he does multiple syllables in between one and two bars. It's amazing. Remember how the old school rap was on the you know on the beat on the beat, yeah. on the four on the two on the four on the two, on the four, on the two. But now they were doing it on the one and the three. And I think, I think we're getting really nerdy with music, guys. Well, hold on, but I think. I love uh, it. I think it was uh, Rakim who really kind of started that different flow. Prior to that, like, you know, Sugar Hill Gang, it was the same kind of rap structure that they would go through, right? And then mm -hmm. that's why when we're going to get to the new album, I want to talk to you about what he, Otto was uh, alluding to was song structure. Now, it's probably different, but do you ask for the beat first and then rap on top of it how you're feeling? Or do you say, hey, I got these rhymes, give me a beat, and I'm going to make it work with that? Or is it a little mix of both? 
it's all over the place. You know, sometimes if I don't have a new beat, I'll write to an old school, like just a beat, like some, I'll put on a 12 inch instrumental that I've got and like write to that. Uh, other times I get a beat and it inspires me to write something. And then other times it's just, I've got, you know, I'll write a rhyme and just wait for the perfect beat or I work, you know, I work with a lot of the producers closely to find yeah. stuff. And, and I'm always digging for my own samples as well as working with different producers. So it's a real, you know, it really is a group effort for, for the tracks uh, for that. But I mean, yeah, I've always got sort of a running list of songs I'm working on and just kind of waiting for that perfect beat to, to click. Uh, or you, sometimes you I get a, an, an amazing you have a beat. sweet spot for BPM as far as like 110, 114, right around there, that kind of plastic one, even 100 or slower is more like, you know, hip hop. Yeah, like honestly, I think I usually fall in kind of the pocket of like 88 to 92. I okay, think so like that's, that's cool. yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so in that way, I do have a lot of like that boom bap, a lot of like yeah. kind of what you know, what the kids today call old school, but you know, <laughs> right to me, like that's uh, that's kind of my sweet spot, and yeah. and uh, you know, it, really it, it depends what the flow is going to be, yeah. And so, let's talk about the, hmm. the new album, Space Verse, and tell mm -hmm. us what the concept is, what you you know, how you came up with the concept. Up and we'll, we'll well I put the link in there already, guys. You tell the people uh, how they can get it and how free it is, or how much you can pay for it. Well, you can name your price on Bandcamp if you just go to propsdepartment.bandcamp.com. Right nope, or you know you can stream it. I appreciate people paying for it, but you know I like to do these concept albums every couple uh, releases, and this is just a fun one. To, I just want people to enjoy it and take it in. If you never heard of me, give it a shot. You know, maybe if you like. If you like space battles and star people, uh, right. <laughs> it's uh, definitely inspired by my well, love of like science you know fiction. I, yeah, I don't want to interrupt you, but I want to play a song off there as soon as I figure out how to share my screen here. Right. Uh, I want to play Cyber Connoisseur and well, just listen to it because that's my, that's my favorite jam on, that is, on, on the new. Dope. Shout out my man Diagnostic 80 on that beat. Uh, oh, nice. Just crushed it. Yeah. I was I was going deep into that album, too, and not only Star Wars, but you're almost a huge Trekkie, too. You yes. had Red Alert on there. You know what I mean? You were dropping Will Riker and some ship <laughs> names and stuff like that. So Yeah, yeah. You know, when that, I went into that one, I was like, all right. Yeah, I love it. It's the Red Shirt remix. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Where am I sharing right now? Hold on. Let me get back to. Yeah, that's my man. Have? More or less. uh crush that that was like that originally showed up on on the more or less album okay. uh, nerd love which is really dope and then he made this the remix for uh for uh picard maneuver and yeah, timbuktu right. and touch are on that too and they, right. they just crushed picard it. maneuver that's great right, yeah. i'm gonna play a uh, cyber connoisseur now let's see if we can hear it right on I mean, I could just acapella it, acapella it. <laughs> Tim, you got it coming up? Yeah, I'm not hearing it. I'm not hearing it either. You guys aren't yeah. hearing it? No. no. Are you hearing it? Yeah, I'm like jamming the way you're rocking your head. <laughs> right, and I yeah. just waiting for something yeah. to drop. All right, hold on, man. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking I was sharing it. No, dude, you were feeling it too, man. And we're just sitting there like, all right, it's yeah. going to drop eventually. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. I think I got to have the right window open here. Shout out to everybody it. tuning in. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having some some comic news drop too. So it's exciting. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to that, man. Yeah, so uh, hold on, let me get to my stuff here sorry this is uh, uh not used to using Streamyard. uh all right so share screen chrome tab share audio justin says tell me if you guys hear this do you guys hear that negative no all right hold on is there a share audio button somewhere in settings no no no. i'm sharing okay. my screen okay here it is ah sorry here we go you hear that no you hear that? Negative. But I've listened to it, so I know it kicks, man. So that's great. Oh, hold on. I see. Hold on. All right. One of these is going to work. Sorry, everybody. All right. Try it. You hear that? Negative. Anyway, we tried, man. Crack the back. <laughs> I mean, I can drop like the opening of that Cybertron, sir. Um, yeah. 
All right, Go straight out of Iacon. I've been scribing on Cybertron since before the Primes first turned their high beams on. Right along with the pride of Ironhide, I'll be kind, recording everything I see like rewind. I am the All Spark, Alpha to Zeta Prime, Diaclone, ahead of my time, Optimus Primal, transforming with a monkey on my spinal, Stunticons, Junkions, I wreck guard, turn you into a trash can with the wreckers ready for my last stand. The OGG1 got you tripping on my whole body of work, Triptychon, inflict upon like Scorponok, fast track. They forgot I was a leader like Rat Bat. Flipping scripts and sides, Thundercracker. You'll never change me back, Action Master. Yo, yeah, there you go. Yeah, dude. What are you talking about? All right. So, so much stuff from the Transformers movie, the original cartoon, man. It brings me back right, to my so, uh, Before we get to the news, man, uh, why don't you, uh, we're going to do the Five Fingers of Death. Uh, so you could drop like a four or an eight or whatever, and then we'll switch it up on you. So, well, let me see. I'm, I'll start something easy, man. Uh, this is a comic book we talked about recently. Uh, it's, you know about the Sentry? I know Sentry. Marvel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, go ahead and drop a little freestyle about the Sentry. Okay, well, let's talk about the Sentry. Hang on, I need a second to remember, see? He was that guy that nobody actually remembered, see? I remember he started, it was written by Paul Jenkins, yeah, and everybody was like, um, yeah, I thank him. No, I can't thank him. His suit was gold and blue. He joined the Avengers True before Jessica Jones, dude. Yeah, I remember Sentry. He had the hair that was blonde, but I don't know where he was gone yeah but dr strange went far beyond you know he's got the power he's out out in the movies and uh checking every hour i think steve ditko was one of the original creators working on that book and yeah you can ask me later because i weapon x. weapon x wolverine straight from canada you know when it comes there to reading go. comics not an amateur adamantium skull uh, skull bones and claws something like that you don't have to hit pause because he fought when to go um back in the snow and then he had to call up uh, my people alpha flight yo <laughs> oh yo. <laughs> How about, since we're staying with alpha flight let's talk about puck oh puck you know he's a, a fellow who's short in stature pretty dope and he'll uh, take you to the rapture like we were talking old school that was john byrne i'm just naming all these creators yo it's hard to learn hard to earn there's a gangstar reference taking it back once again when i represent halifax talking hip-hop and comics yeah that's what i love that's where i'm going yo i put on a power glove not an infinity gauntlet but yeah you want it i drop around earlier we talked power cosmic maybe yo no that that's the silver surfer uh, you know me sj a b the word burglar rock coming at you straight kicking flavor like condiment king what i don't know what else you gonna bring <laughs> you know i spread my rhyme like an incurable disease the black plague of all your sorry whack mcs you went to the doctor for the antidote he said listen to tivo that's your only hope because my rhyme is so dope it could get you stoned kick back fool as i spark up the microphone i'm good to go like some stink ass indo as i start to flow gonna work and stop tivo Go ahead, Otto. Yeah, yo, I got nothing to follow up with that. <laughs> they got a committee yo, to man, me off the block because I say my rounds loud and I say I'm not stop. So oh, there we go. Shit. There you go. All right. You know, all the old guys trying to keep up with the young Bert word. Yep. But, hey, man. So we told them where they didn't get the album. Uh, where, where are you coming up on some shows? Uh, you're going to be stateside. Where are you going to be at? Yeah, I'm going to be in New York City actually playing three shows, October 4th and 5th at the Mercury Lounge, and then I'm playing October 6th at uh, the Bowery Electric. All New York City, that's the same weekend nice. as uh, New York Comic Con. So well oh, planned, right? Well planned. You want to come out and party after uh, the Sunday you night be show. At the show to, at the Comic Con, New York Comic Con too? Uh, I'm going to try and be there, yeah. So I that was my plan, but I still haven't got a pass yet. So, uh, you know, yeah. We know a lot of people up. in low places in New York City Comic yeah. Con. Man. So, shout, hey, NY Warriors, if you guys are listening, that's another YouTube channel, all uh, New York uh, City collectors. Uh, uh, hey, if you get my man Word Burglar, can you put him on the guest list for the shows? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. There we will we'll, hey. we'll hook you up. You'll get the, the full Berg treatment. Uh, all, all right. right. If anybody go. is watching, you're, you can get my man a pass for New York City Comic Con. Hit me up on, uh, in, on uh, Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. I'll send you out some comics. And we're burglar to get you into a show. Just get him. Oh, a yeah. We'll get you all kinds of swag. You know That'd be really oh, fresh. Yeah. I let me reach out to my boy, very Gary. He has a he's going to be a, a he's going to have a booth there and he yep, can probably absolutely. get you a dealer pass. Dope. So uh, you know what? I'll hit you up on Facebook, bro. Let me talk to my man, very Gary. He's going to have a booth there. You can't miss him. He's a big. Red, he's got giant red hair. Uh, <laughs> you can't miss him. Place. He'll be uh, one of the uh, million guys who look like that. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out yeah. to my no, man Disney Movie News on Twitter. I told him I give him a shout out for his 27th birthday. 
Uh, shout out to my man, Sith Lordly, uh, Sith and his wife, Kara, who was singing the Lord's theme song at the LCS today. Uh, Sith Lordly, uh, it's a funny story, man. They were at um, WonderCon. Uh, no, no, they were at D23, and somebody stole all the D23 one, uh, Marvel 1000 variants. So oh, what's no. cool is uh, C.B. Sibolsky sent them all comics afterward as, as well as a Marvel no prize. So for those who don't know, Marvel used to hand out these no prizes whenever you caught little mistakes in their comics. So that's that's from there. So yeah. you're going to hang out with us so we drop some news? Yeah, yeah, please. I will. All right. So we got graphics. And so let me uh, let me do this properly, man. Let me do a little intro to uh, breaking news. Ladies and gentlemen, could I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! <laughs> So that was me this weekend. <laughs> I had to drop that. I had to drop that, man. So uh, let's get right to it, boys and girls. We got a long-term spec list for you. Uh, Berg, if you didn't know, uh, we got uh, our inside of the Dark Knight gives us a uh, reserve list that DC and Marvel Studios, they put a hold on characters. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be in their own, starring in their own solo film, but it says, hey, I want to use them for movies or TV. So we got a list for DC, and I'm going to test your knowledge on these because these are some pretty obscure characters when uh, me and Otto were going through and we're like, Jeez. who the hell are these people? Oh. But uh, before we get to that, uh, let me break down. Um, so a lot of people came here for the Sony Marvel news. Uh, yeah. Did you put something on Twitter I, about that today, Tim? Yes, I did, man. No, oh, did you start a hornet's about, nest or what? Uh, basically, uh, it's 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 at a stalemate right now. So Sony and Marvel aren't talking. But the other news is that uh, Amazon and Apple want to buy Sony Pictures now. Why would Sony do this? Because now, guess what? They got a bidding war. They got they got Sony. Now you got. Uh, Amazon, Apple TV, who's launching, and they need content. Sony Pictures has that content. So why would Marvel... So here's the thing about this. So Sony's going to let them bid each other and put the price up. Sony stock goes up, everything goes up. Marvel doesn't do anything. Disney doesn't have to do anything because in the contract, if anybody buys Sony Pictures, the rights to Spider-Man goes back to Marvel. So Marvel is just be patient, let this plays out, and guess what? They get the rights to Spider-Man back on all of his characters and they don't have to spend a dime um, because Apple TV really wants to make a dent into that streaming space. So I got the further confirmation from our friend, uh, Mikey Sutton. And I'm Mikey Sutton on Facebook. He's an insider that uh, also laces up with information every now and then. Mikey says, Apple will get what they want one way or another. Spider-Man will be back in the MCU by the end of this year or 2020. This is what I'm hearing by a few people who spoke on the Disney side. I don't know if this is just general confidence or based on matters that they won't talk about. I do feel I have enough for a full report right now, but that's where I stand for the moment. So there it is. So please stop asking about it. <laughs> it says, that is the one thing that everybody's asking about right now. And it's just one of those things. It's it's right now they're in a holding pattern. Don't expect anything by the end of the year. I mean, remember how long it took for the Fox Sony deal yeah. happened. It actually was first reported in 2015. So it took about two, you know, good two, three years before they announced the Sony Fox deal. Um, so that's where we're put it on the back burner right now. Right, Tim, just yeah, forget man. about it. Enjoy. We got a great movie coming out in a Joker. We've got a lot of stuff coming up. So just put so it on the back burner, people. You here's know? what I expect to happen, man. Sony is just going to go about business as they normally do because they do not want to alarm any bells because the shareholders are going to freak out and start selling the stock. Now, if they continue to do what they're doing, a uh, Apple, Amazon, and potentially Netflix are hearing too, starts a bidding war. Guess what happens? The Sony stock price goes up, goes up. They get more money. Marvel doesn't care. They have a ton of stuff they got to do. And they're like, look, Spider-Man will be back and we don't have to pay a dime for it. We were going to give you 20%, 30%, 50%, but no more. Um, another big story that we dropped uh, last week, uh, I believe, was uh, the Hulk and Wolverine. And this is great that Word Burglar is on the show because this has a very Canadian tie to it. So <laughs> With Alpha uh, Flight. Yeah, we uh, our man, the Black Knight, uh, our uh, corroborated story that Mikey Sutton dropped that there's going to be a Wolverine and Hulk movie, not Hulk per se, because uh, Universal still owns the rights to any solo Hulk film. But we reported that um, the Hulk was going to go uh, into Canada looking for Weapon X to bring him back and they were going to fight Alpha Flight for the that. Well, I get more details. So the details are we had a little backwards. So this is what's going to happen. So. Uh, this is what leads to our spec that they're going to be using the Immortal Hulk version of the Hulk, not Professor Hulk. So something happens to the Hulk before he heads to the U.S. So that tells you that 
Professor Hulk kind of loses it. And he goes back to his immortal Hulk version, which is kind of this dark kind of thing where he no longer has Bruce Banner's morale, right? He can do whatever he wants. Um, to So the immortal Hulk wanders or escapes into Canada where the, the Hulk is seen as a threat in Canada. Weapon X is now working for Alpha Flight in Department H. They send in Wolverine to confront the Hulk. So we had the story a little bit backwards, but those are the details and we have. You, you excited about that, Berg? Yeah, this is actually the first I've heard about this. Uh, I didn't Welcome know. To I mean, the Lord of the long box, baby. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for Wolverine, do you think it's going to be Hugh Jackman or that it's going to be all new casting? Has this been even talked about? It's This is an early planning. Yeah. Uh, what I was told that it's Hugh Jackman's part to turn down. Yes. He's like they're, the leaving wow. the door open. they're leaving the door open for him, but Hugh Jackman is, could possibly be like, you know, I feel too old about it. Uh, or anything like that. So right now, there's all the rumors about casting. I, I wouldn't believe any of it because it's still in the early pages of scanning or um, planning. So I have an insider who knows people that are in the inside of Disney and Marvel who are planning these. So you think of Kevin Feige has this big board and he throws these things out there. He goes, I want this story done. They work about the details later, but this is what we're hearing. So a lot of times our our, our followers are comic, books, uh, are comic book speculators and they want to buy comics before they get hot. So Hulk 181 is probably too expensive too already. Hot. But too hot. what the key point of this story was that they're going to be using the Immortal Hulk version of the story. So that Immortal Hulk book could get really hot. Let me go back to what our man Mikey it's, Sutton says. Yeah, that's already know. a hard one to find because that was in that when um, they did that series, Ewing, yeah. art series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, so it's it's like a like a horror version of the Hulk yeah, where no, Bruce Banner dies off and the Hulk is like just... It's very, I mean, he literally goes to hell and yeah. comes back, right? Uh, and this is, I've been telling people this book is hot. It's a great read. And it's one of the few like books that outsold Batman on a weekly basis yeah. for like, I think too much straight. Uh, it was, I mean, it could be speaking something of the decline of Batman and the rise of the Hulk, but that's pretty cool that a Hulk title can be outselling Batman. Let me go back to this. I hope Mike Sutton doesn't get mad at me, but. I would, he put this up on Facebook and I screen grabbed it to use it and then he deleted it afterwards. So I don't know what that means. I don't know if somebody from Sony or somebody is telling him to get rid of that, but he put this up on his Facebook and I screenshot it because I want to use it in um, w with the information I got from the Black Knight. So you see this is not, you're not going to be able to see this anywhere, but whoever's watching the show, I have a feeling it's going to be put somewhere else now. Uh, so those are our two big stories of uh, the week, man. So remember that we got Hope Wolverine. It's going to be Wolverine, or excuse me, Hulk, kind of going feral, immortal Hulk version, going into Canada, maybe escaping something from the U.S., and then Alpha Flight, Department H, sending in, and I, my guess is he's going to be called Weapon H, not yeah. Wolverine yet. So all you old school fans, remember Alpha Flight, Omega Flight, dude, we talked about Alpha Flight in this kind of, I wish you would have been on the show, because I'm a huge fan of John Byrne. I love the oh, yeah. X-Men run and his Alpha Flight run. That, yep. His so West Coast cool. Avengers run, too. I Every, wish he could have finished that. Yeah. I just wish he was a better person. Yeah, you know, I'm telling you. <laughs> he can be He's a, up to do with Neil Adams, but anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, so we're going to go over... Burglar, are you there? I'm here, yeah. Yeah, gotta, Tim cut out for a minute. I got to freeze for Tim. But yeah, I yeah, got I, up here. I love I love Alpha Flight and uh yeah, Weapon H, that's what they were calling Hulk, but d d wasn't there like the Hulk no. that got the Wolverine? I think it's my internet connection. No, there, there you go, you're better. Yeah. Oh, it, was Wolverine, Wolverine, right? talking, you know. it was my internet connection. Sorry, go ahead, yeah. guys. No, no, oh, we were just, we were just saying the Alpha oh. Flight and you know Hulk, Hulk and Wolverine and stuff. Really, it's for the X-Men books, you want to be at 109 because that's the first, that's where he first comes looking Vindicator. for Vindicator. Vindicator yeah. comes looking for him. Then 120, 121. And then you go all the way up to 141, 140. Well, that stays a future past, but 139. Well, Alpha Flight number one is the first yes. piece of like Puck in a lot of characters. Puck. That's so where you want to get there, right? Absolutely. Team, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So just great books to have, man. Great books to have and great reads. Yeah. yeah. So they just came out with a new issue of Alpha Flight. I picked that up. I actually yeah. got that. Yeah. And they had a lot of Canadian creators working on it, too. Yeah. Alpha Flight. Yeah, that was like a, no, no, they're all Canadian. That is like an yeah. all star Canadian team. So, I mean, yeah, that's no, I picked that up. Yeah, because you know it was, it was funny because you know you'd read it and then Puck was like the only one who would say A, right? <laughs> and he was like the hardcore Canadian one. And then like I was a big, I was even a big fan of Sasquatch, man. It's like uh, yeah, but Shane Man was my dude because I'm a huge Doctor Strange fan. So anytime yeah. Shane Man like reached into his bag, I remember one time in one of the Alpha Five books, uh, they put somebody in the bag and he went crazy because they couldn't handle what they yeah. saw inside yeah. of the bag. That right, was nuts to me, man. So and then there's that issue. Is it called like whiteout where it's just all the snow? Yes. Snow that blind. Was, yeah. yeah, snow blind. Yeah, snow blind. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah was, Snowbird was, was like kind of uh, Snowbird, and then there was the twins, right? Um, the twins, and, Aurora and North yeah, Star. Yeah, yeah. But so, that yeah. was like John Byrne at the height of his powers. He was yeah. doing Alpha Flight. He was doing uh, X Men at the same. Oh, yeah. Doing- and look, he killed the Vindicator. I, I know episode, issue number twelve is ingrained in my head as a kid. You yeah. know, like when he blew up in that one panel, it's just he never came back either. He one never came back. And he kept him dead. dead, man. Him That's and Rick right. Jones. Yeah. He did, man. Well, I don't know. Rick Jones may have came back a couple times. Like, we I just saw Rick Jones in. He was in that Marvel 80th issue, that yeah. uh, Marvel 1000 that just came out. There's a. Yeah. We'll change that to uh, a Vindicator and Captain Marvel. Yeah, uh, he's, he's yeah. stayed dead. He's had some kids, but I mean, for the most part, Marvel was dead. I was well, like, Uncle Ben him. too. Uncle Ben, right? He he might have come back. Oh, oh, man, yeah, let's yeah, not even bring up Clone Sagas. And yeah, I was gonna say Clone Saga. Uh, <laughs> and Peter Parker's guy parents, was ben, but it's his grandson, right? Yeah, I remember right, Peter Parker's parents that. were yeah. in a Kurt Busiek run, I think. Yeah, Kurt Busiek, but, Astro City. I heard that's coming. Yeah. They're gonna make a show. They got the uh, option, but they haven't done it. I got the entire run of Astro City. If you guys haven't read it, that's like Kurt Busiek okay. creating his own superhero world. It's absolutely incredible, man. Yeah. Are you excited that's for Watchmen that's coming up on HBO, Berg? You know, I actually am. Uh, weirdly, I know you know I'm a huge Alan Moore fan, and there's you know that's a whole other conversation. But I am pretty excited to see. I've been actually like, it's funny right here. I've got the new uh, like Doomsday Clock. I'm oh, loving. Yeah. I'm nice. loving. Here we go. Clock. Yeah, Bro, Doom, just killing us with this ever. Ever. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> Doom's that thing start, man. Yeah, it's it's been a great great series, and I think Jeff Johns was a perfect artist, or yeah. him and Gary Frank with a perfect team to to handle that book, and and Jeff Johns like the story's been great, but but yeah, I'm, I'm curious because that's Damon Lindelof doing that. Is that correct on the new Watchmen show? Yes, yes. From and so I was a big Lost fan. I believe uh, it's a. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if it's a prequel to Watchmen or if it's afterward because you see uh, you see Doctor Manhattan. As well as the Rorschach guys, so I'm trying to remember what the timeline if is it if it's after or before, but it looks pretty like like dark, dark light. Like, yeah, uh, I'm not sure how it's going to work. Like the Doomsday Clock takes place in sort of the DCU, uh, yeah. with some interesting twists. I don't want to spoil it if people haven't read it because I know a lot of people are waiting for the trade. But I've been yeah. uh, I've been getting it whenever those issues come out. They're like four months. Is apart. it even close to ending yet? Doomsday yeah, Clock. Yeah, this is uh, issue eleven. This is the newest oh, one. Cow. Just came I out. So. I swear to God, that thing's been going on for like two years now. It's like yeah, uh, I think it has. I think pretty jump the shark. <laughs> it's been great though. It's worth it. Uh, I'm surprised at how much I'm loving it. Like honestly, since Rebirth, I've been like the DC books have just been crushing it. Like, nice. I think Ford Dorelli had made a comment there regarding your uh, <laughs> your, your rap there. What do you know about Wood God? Huh? What, do I, what do I know about Wood God? He's a man brute life form who looks odd. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna Actually, say that we, we can't throw that into freestyle because you already talked about Wood God. Man. You know yeah. what? I wonder if I had. I thought I had the issue around here somewhere. There you go. That's for real. Oh, look at oh, the oh, he drops boy, the hammer. Yeah, yeah. Wood God on you, son. How am I getting the thing? Yeah. Oh, look at those hooves yeah. on him. Wood God. All yeah. right. So yeah. let's get right to it, man. So uh, first on the long-term spec list is a character that's been spec before, but know this. This character is coming to the big screen. That's right, boys and girls. Warner Bros. Oh. put a uh, reserve on the reverse flash. Professor and- Zoom. If that means it's going to be on the big screen, that can only mean one thing, that it's he, they're going to use them in the Flash film. That can only mean that. So uh, what's the first appearance, Otto? What are we looking at? Yeah, you want to go after Flash 139. This is an iconic uh, Silver Age cover. Uh, the first appearance of Reverse Flash. He's on the cover. You've got Flash coming right out. Then you've got Reverse Flash, um, Menace of Reverse Flash, published in 1963. You know, honestly- that Infantino? This, that's Carmine Infantino, right? Carmine Infantino, absolutely. Yeah. It's got Infantino written on it all day. And, uh, but this is a classic villain. Like you talk about a rogues gallery. I mean, Flash's rogues gallery has his villains, but he's one of the top, I think. And even in a Flash TV show, he just brought great, um, all the characters that were the Zoom characters were just really, really cool. So well, it's good that they're bringing this to the film because I think a lot of people expect on like the TV show. I mean, yes. we had Zoom and Reverse Flash and yep. a lot of, and, you know, it was just ad nauseum. And it became too like, much, but this was a, yeah, you know, the first couple seasons of Flash was something good. for the big screen because what is yeah. a big screen movie of the Flash without the Flash's rogues gallery? Of course. So. Uh, next up on the list is actually something that's been talked about for a while now, but we're finally getting word that they're putting uh, a reserve on these two characters. Like I said, the reserve doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be used in their own solo film, but they want to use them, and it would be Beetle and Booster Gold. The best. What do you uh, What do you know about them, man? Booster Gold. Oh, that's man. Bad. 
the Giffen and J.M. Demetrius Justice League run where, you know, that, that's when I really got introduced to Booster and and, uh, and Blue Beetle. And, and when uh, Gardner got knocked out. Yeah, one, one punch. punch. <laughs> one punch, one punch. <laughs> one yeah. punch. Yeah, that's that's such a great run. I'm sure a lot of your uh, your viewers know the, that that run. And uh, I actually really like when, speaking about Jeff Johns again, both Flash and Booster Gold, when Jeff Johns did the Booster Gold solo series, a while back there and uh he was teaming up with like rip hunter and he was trying to go back and save uh blue beetle who died during was it infinite crisis or infinite one of the cri crisis. yeah yeah, yeah. So, um, so well speaking of which we got the first appearance of booster gold right here by yeah. Dan Jurgens. what do you know about this auto no it's great 1986 dan jorgens this is what we like here at three or long box center we let's we love this on lords of the long box this is a first issue first appearance not only is it the first appearance of booster gold but it's the first appearance of a great sidekick let's not forget about skeets yeah skeets is a great <laughs> sidekick that people just disregard but he's part of booster gold you know booster gold's powers come from his his suit and the future and how he comes back and he's you know the flamboyant kind of know everything but in reality you know the dad was a deadbeat um and now he's got the suit and he's got the sponsors and well, this book i was on ebay today you can still get this in a high grade for you know under a couple hundred bucks so oh, i would yeah. be going you after this book right now, because you know? they said they were going to do something with it and they just forgot about it for the longest yeah. time what's more interesting to me is the next character uh or blue beetle because blue beetle has a crazy history i mean he does there's three versions of him, but my I, my guess is I don't know I I don't know if it's going to be the Jamie Reyes version they're going to use because all we I know is so. a reserve on it. So these are the three issues that um that you should get yeah. if you want if you want to get the Blue Beetle. If you didn't know, Mr. Yeah. Man Comics in 1939 is the first appearance of the original Blue Beetle. Um, Dan. and it, what was his name? Uh, Dan Garrett was the first Dan Blue Beetle Garrett. Right there. Yeah, Dan, Dan Garrett. Garrett. That came out in the uh, 30s. Ted, yeah, Ted Cord and Jamie Reyes. Yep. Now is Ted Cord for everybody, yeah. we should know this. Ditko creator right there at the Ditko creation. So we're big fans of Ditko here yeah. at yeah. Lord. So, yeah. And that's a, was it Charlton comics? Yeah. Charlton they comics. Were, yep. He was the original basis for Night Owl, right? From Watchmen. We were just talking about because all those Watchmen characters were based off uh, like Captain Adam and, and like all the Charlton characters. So Night oh, Owl. Nice. Yeah. Night yeah. Owl was originally like a blue beetle and, um, it, I think that I heard that was the original pitch that Alan Moore was just supposed to take all those Charlton characters and make them like adult. And yep. then they were like, no, no, just make it its own thing. Cause now we can never, it's kind of hard, yeah, kinda hard to make this. them all yeah. dark after that, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So next up on the list, um, uh, the rest of these are for TV. Now, when we say DC TV, that can literally mean anything nowadays. Uh, that could be CW. That could be the new HBO, uh, what is that called? HBO max. Um, it can be on, you know, whatever HBO maybe, cause now we got Watchmen, but this one, I know nothing about. It's kind of a goofy character. Word Burger probably knows more, a lot about this character, but we're hearing <laughs> ambush bug has been reserved for TV. They want to put him. I mean, this is sounds something silly that can be in, you know, uh, the legends of tomorrow or anything like that, or maybe something we haven't even seen yet. What do you know about ambush bug yeah. auto? Well, this, you had to dig deep on this one, man. <laughs> yes, this, I is, did. this is DC yeah. presents. Uh, Superman and the Doom Patrol, the first appearance of Ambush Bug. But the great news about it is this was 1982. This is uh, Keith Giffen. Giffen was in his prime. And I, I mean, yeah. this is right around the Omega Man right after that, um, the Lobo series. And this is a villain that they could use as a, like an antagonist, kind of like that pest that always hangs around, kind of like a Mr. Mitzel flick or, um, you know, something around there. So just an interesting book. This is a great book to have. No, who's going out looking for DC Comics number 52? Yes, exactly. Right? This is on, I mean, this is on eBay right now for $5, you guys. I don't oh, even think it was a CGC spec. copy. That's what we like, man. Cheap specs. Yep. Buy Go low, ahead. Yeah. So high. And then you the know. next, here's a test for Word Brother. Let's see if he knows these two. Uh, I, he may know them, but let's see if he knows what their first appearance is. So we're not, next on the reserve list for TV for uh, DC is... Yeah. Oh, fire. Fire and, and ice. ice. That's, That's hard. Crazy. I mean, I remember that. I, did, I will straight up admit, I don't know what the first Giffen prince Giffen Demetrius Justice League, like in the. Get uh, out of here. Drop the mic, dude. Did yeah, you get is the that show it? Notes beforehand? No, no, I read no. it. I remember it thinking. Justice League, it was Super Friends, but you're you're right was, on that. I was, okay, well, yeah. Yeah. The first, yeah, the first appearance of Ice Super Friends 9. Who has yeah. Super Friends 9 in their long box? Points to you. Guy. <laughs> right. I have Super Friends number one only because that was my show growing up. Yeah. But, you know, I, I I dig through tons of boxes and tons of shows. And these Super Friend books, I don't see often, you know. So 1979 is First Ice. Unbelievable. I don't even know who wrote or read it. But the first appearance of Ice is there. The first appearance of Fire? 
Yep, is uh, Super, Super Friends number twenty five. Look at that, dude. That's that. Th- yeah. I just love these uh, wonky covers and old Super. I mean, this was obviously done because of the, the the popularity of Super Friends on yes. you know uh, the Saturday morning cartoons, which right. Word raps a lot about. Also, uh, is Saturday morning cartoons, which is something I don't even remember exists anymore. I no, there's an yeah. article if you Google it. Um, the last Saturday morning cartoon. I remember it, it happened right around the mid two thousands, and there was an article about it. I was like, "Man, that's kind of sad. I, I, that's our childhood. It's gone. There's no more Saturday morning cartoons." The last, if you guys Google it, it'll tell you what the last one was. I didn't even know it was still on, but apparently, uh, you could still get that. Um, Jeez, I remember the actually the Justice League cartoon, like yep. the more recent one, like Justice League Unlimited. For a that while, was it was on Saturday. It, like yeah. I. I'm trying to think the last time I saw something on Saturday morning, but that oh, would have yeah. I had a lot yeah. of yeah. cartoons yeah. moved to like weekdays, like after like, school. Yes, you know, three to five o'clock. I mean? yeah. Yep. Yeah. Race home. You know, Thundercats was on G.I. Joe Transformers. Yeah, yeah. That was the last time you, those after school cartoons. I remember when I lived in the Bay Area, they started showing like Robotech and anime. Yeah, so right. Like, you know, Macron one. Silverhawks. I just I was looking, I almost bought a set of Silverhawks figures for $150. You know what they're bringing back? Gargoyles. They're bringing back gargoyles, gargoyles was phenomenal yeah oh i love Keith saying i would love to come back to voice gargoyles because remember david keith's voice is so like you can tell yeah and he's saying saying i would love to be part of that if you guys would have me they're going to redo i remember the gargoyles when i saw it i was like man this isn't even for kids this is really like heavy storytelling great animation i was like man that, that would be cool man that's the one property i can't believe it like disney owns it it's a straight up original disney property they did it to compete with batman animated series yep. and it was so good and i can't so believe they've never yeah. done a movie because well, i feel they like they plus put on now because they yeah. got you know the day uh november 12th when the disney plus streaming service there's a I list take that day there. off there's like a ton of stuff on there. I actually saw it. I gave up after the bees because there's somebody listed them alphabetically. It's like everything, the entire Disney library, animated movies, all the films, Herbie love bug, right? If you think freaky Friday, everything, all Iron Man, the entire MCU, it's yeah. crazy, man. Well, uh, Greg Weissman, I think it's Weissman, the creator, the co-creator of that show, Gargoyles. He went went on to work on the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, so he's at least got a. You know, I know he's in with uh, with the Disney Marvel cartoon people. Yeah, he did a lot of cool work on that show. But. Yo, with Disney Plus, man, they can really do anything. So, what next up on this list is, is a cool book that I kind of knew existed, but not really. We're hearing yeah. that they put a reserve on the team of Checkmate. Checkmate. That's right. Mm-hmm. And uh, what, because uh, a few weeks ago, we dropped the long term spec list and we had OMAC on there, the right. OMAC. And yep. uh, Checkmate also kind of ties in with Amanda Waller, also ties in kind of with Deathstroke. It's got an interesting history, but you know, not many people know about it. Uh, what is the first appearance, Otto? Action Comics 598. You're getting up there in Action Comics. This John came out Byrne. John That's Byrne. a great cover. It yeah. It's a great cover. And I'm surprised. This would be a great cover. Now, see, this is where I, how I truly believe comics are a work of art. Like, you take this in a high grade, you put this in a frame, and you put this on a wall, and this is going to stand out no matter what between yeah. the whites and the yellows and the Superman that crazy flying. nuclear bomb thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. That, yeah. Is, that, that, is, that is true art, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would look great in a night. But I, I got to be honest with you guys, I know Zilcho, nada, nothing about this, but it's yeah. too much. This, I didn't even know this first appearance. This last book on here is really going to test uh, Word Burglar. I saved the most obscure <laughs> for last. This character has also been put on a reserve list by uh, DC, and uh, it's not the Cobra you think about. It's oh, yeah. Thing. Dude, he is dope. I would like the design of Cobra is awesome. I'm not dude, sure. Dude, it it reminds me of uh, G.I. Joe. What is his name? Serpentor? Serpentor. Or? Yeah. It looks like yeah. Serpentor. Absolutely. Right. He looks like him, right? Yeah. I think he predates Serpentor for sure. He does. For sure. You know why? I think he's appearance. like late right 70s. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Jack 19, Kirby created him. Jack Kirby, 1976. Cobra 76, number one. Yeah. Yep. Wow. First issue, first appearance right there. Bang. And if they didn't take Serpentor off that, I don't know. Come on. You know what I mean? That's. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you, if you, have if you could a, split the screen and put Serpentor up there, it'd look like the same thing. If you had this first issue, props to you. You're probably the only one. Yeah, has been. you're a true Kirby fan then, you know? Yeah. And you I know mean, what? I'm sad that I don't have this. I've got to go look for it now. That's you know, a pretty great. Yeah. Is he a Kirby like creation too? I didn't yeah. know yes. that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Kirby wrote and uh, he wrote, he co-wrote and he illustrated this, this issue. So this is when Kirby was doing, came over from Marvel and he jumped ship to DC and he was yep. doing a lot of stuff. And right now from the uh, specs that we've been doing, they're DC is digging to a lot of what Kirby did over at DC and the, you know, developing, I think, uh, I think it wasn't OMAC also a Kirby creation. I oh think yeah. Omac also, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
So yeah. uh, a lot of that stuff, man. So, uh, Hey, we're just about an hour right now. want to thank word burglar for coming on the show. You're more than welcome to come back anytime you fit in perfectly with the Lords of the long box, any last words, anything you want to promote before you, uh, we get up out of here. No, I just want to thank you. That's been an absolute pleasure. And I love what you guys are doing here. So thanks for having me on. And yeah, anytime uh, you need somebody to fill in, I'm happy to come back and uh, talk about comics. I will take you over the other guys any day, man. So <laughs> again, tell everybody where no. you can find your album. Uh, yeah, we'll go to wordburglar.com. There's links to everything or just type in word burglar uh, and you'll find me. I'm on all digital platforms, however you like to stream. On YouTube if you want as well. To make sure yeah. you sub them up. And one, one thing we didn't really get to talk about, he makes really cool music videos, which is a lost art nowadays, I think. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's I get to work with a lot of talented people. So uh, yeah, check out the videos. You know, hit me up on Twitter or Instagram or anything. And uh, yeah, just keep reading comics and listening to good hip hop. You know, that's... Yep. To, to um, the best things in life. <laughs> that's right, man. Because you know what? Going back to like Nucleus Jam on it when they had the comic yeah. cover right there. Even in rock and roll, Joe Satriani and talking to Silver Surfer right on his. I bought that damn that's vinyl right. just because of that cover. Silver I don't even Surfer. like oh, those. Man, you gotta <laughs> hang out, man. Like you're dropping all this. I'm just like, wow, you're dropping the. Hey, the next time you come to Southern California, man, we're gonna hook yeah. up and uh, we're going to studio, man. DJ Kirsten, we'll do something. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Oh, oh there we go. DJ Kirsten, the world famous beat junkies, making a beat, and I'm hoping my man Warburger is gonna be able to do a. Lords of Long Box, 16 we bars. We get to that. Me. Yeah, this week was That's a bit right. busy, but I will definitely. It'll just give me a reason to come back, man. That's right. Hey, <laughs> I'm home like, and NY words. That big easy, thing. man. Yeah. You guys, if you guys want to peep them out, uh, hit me up, and we'll get you guys on the guest list for um, what's the name of the joint in uh, NYC? You're going to be at? Oh yeah, I'm playing at the, the Mercury Lounge and Mercury at Lounge. Bowery Electric. So there yeah. you go. Nice. And that's going to be the weekend of New York Comic City Comic Con. Friday, and Saturday, gonna, and Sunday. Yeah. yeah. So big easy. If you guys got a pass from a man, we're burglar, you'd like to go to the con. Uh, I'm going to talk to Very Gary, see if I can get you. Uh, a vendor pass because uh, normally they have extra passes and stuff like that. We'll see, see you hook you up and uh, we'll get you a Lord's t shirt and you'll be slanging books and doing all That's that. Amazing. You may miss your show, man. Uh, you know, you'll be digging in the <laughs> mall boxes at the con. You're, you're like, shit, I got to be somewhere. Where I, I got to find be? that ambush bug number one, you know? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cooper oh number God. one. There you go. Yeah. Dude, you yeah. got to do a rap about the obscure spec list we just dropped. That yeah. would be crazy. That's crazy. Otto, That's any cool. last words? Yeah, thank you very much for coming on, Word Burglar. It was great to have you on the show, man. It was a lot of fun to talk hip hop, comics, and all that stuff. It's great, man. Peep it out, you guys. I listened to it for the past couple of days, man. It's legit. It's good stuff. Really great geek music. And uh, head over to Three Men in the Basement. Shut, sub us up. We're doing a 900 sub giveaway. I got that on the video right there. How to sub up? We're gonna get hit 900 pretty soon. Also, Nemesis Prime just dropped the third part to his sketch um variant covers and there is some beautiful sketches in there so check that out that video is on the three minute basement channel also big weekend if you're here up in the northeast uh the comic swap is happening this saturday um i got the venue set today i got people coming in we got the, tons what's of, the venue yep it's gonna be at the brick house pub in newington connecticut from saturday from one to five so i know there's a lot of dudes coming up for it um i'm giving away a hulk uh i'm sorry a wolverine nine eight book I've got tons of stuff from local comic shops, two local comic shops, the eye opener and heroes and hitters. Google those two will be giving you discounts um, for coming up and mentioning the three men in the basement comic swap. So check that out. This is going to be a great day. This has been a fantastic show. Sorry. I missed last week, but you know, I was in the garage with Mirage. So um, I'm going <laughs> to sign out on that. So on yeah, behalf quick, of you, before know, we go, man, shout out to my man, G Paul, uh, Ace Peter G Pap, who actually is the one that told me about word burglar, like, five years ago when he told me, but he's from uh, Canada. I think uh, GPAP's from Nova Scotia as well, right? Well, uh, thank you. Yeah. Shout out GPAP. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So GPAP is still in Nova Scotia and he just says collecting is just a hard world up there, man. He just says it's hard to get books and everything. So, uh, you know, shout out to Gene Pap. Uh, so thanks for everybody for joining us. We'll be back next Wednesday for the live show. Peep out three men in the basement in New Orleans, Connecticut. Peep out my man, Word Burglar. Go uh, support him and his album. Donate some. Hey, man, you can get it for free, but buy it and support the artist if you can. Man. The there music. you go. There it's called go. Space Force. It's on Bandcamp. Go peep out wordburglar.com, Word Burglar on Facebook, Word Burglar on Twitter. Probably Word Burglar on your bathroom wall at your gas station. Man. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's crazy. I'm the only so, Word Burglar in the phone book. There you go. He burgles <laughs> words, man. Till next time, boys and girls. Keep digging in them long boxes. Peace. Peace. Let me play you off with a little something, boys and girls. Shake and bake and pull it back. Oh my God.